Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna rip through and do our uh, daily technical analysis of commodities. We're gonna work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that I follow. Uh, if you guys need any help with anything, check out finding-value.com. There it is. Uh, you can still use the word discount in the coupon code for a, for a discount on the monthly membership and even the yearly membership. Uh, if you guys are interested, and uh, let's dive in here. I'll give you my financial opinions on what's going on in the markets today. So we've got the DXY, and let me tell you guys, this is a wrecking ball. Uh, yields and the and the dollar rocketing higher today, and it is a wrecking ball for basically everything in the markets today. So we've had this ascending, basically an ascending wedge that generally breaks down, but uh, no, no, no. Those yields on top of those patterns are breaking to the upside and the dollar is going to follow with it. Uh, so here it is, big strong dollar today, uh, up 0 0.77, 0 0.78% is what I'm seeing. It's trading at. Uh, and that is a wrecking ball. Looking at the two year yield, the two year yield up, <clears throat> we're still hanging out on this support resistance line. We broke out on top, kind of came back, and I, I want to see if this rips to the upside. Uh, it very well could. 10-year yield and 30-year yield, well, they're also ripping to the upside. So we're seeing that yield curve really start to accelerate to the upside on the long end of the curve. The, the, the 10 years up 2.4%, the 30 years up 1.75%-ish. Look at that thing rip. We are breaking out. Uh, of this pattern. Now, what is this pattern? Uh, to me, it looks like it's a cup and handle pattern <clears throat> that we've broken. And the projected move of this pattern, if you were to just throw something up here real quick, uh, it's going to be something on the lines of this. You know, we might get into the 5.25 range or something like that. And you could get there pretty quick. Uh, the 10 year yields. Got a similar pattern. You could maybe consider this a cup and handle pattern. Uh, it is breaking out irrespective if the pattern's there, but we could see further upside uh, in yields. And it, and it could be dramatically higher from even where we're at today. And that's going to exert pressure on the overall markets. It's going to exert pressure. So stronger dollar, uh, stronger yields is what it looks like is occurring. Uh, TYX TNX ratio, it did, um, the curve did invert today, uh, where the, <clears throat> the 10 year went up more than the 30 year, so it came down a little bit. And all of these movements <clears throat> are definitely, definitely not supportive of the precious metals. With yields going up and the dollar going up, it is a strong headwind for yields or for uh, the precious metals. Uh, bond prices getting smoked down 2% today. Today, 2% in bond prices on the 20-year. 2% in bonds just getting smoked. Uh, people do not want to hold bonds, apparently. Um, is this a bond crisis? <laughs> it could be, guys. I mean, look at this move here. Uh, going lower. Uh, it has been relentless. Uh, this is going to have a profound effect on how a lot of these assets are being priced with yields moving as much as they are and as fast as they are to the upside. Uh, so looking at precious metals, gold is definitely breaking to the downside. Uh, look at that breakout there. And we could see further downside uh, to go because I mean, look, we've got some pretty strong selling pressure. The momentum's behind this, and we could see further downside. Uh, looking at silver, silver also catching the brunt of this, breaking to the downside in the short term. Those yields and dollar, I mean, we could even come down to this level down here. Now, I know people are probably concerned. They probably say, oh, silver, oh, I'm going to give up on it. Oh, they're going to make all these excuses. I'm going to say, shut up, number one. We don't need excuses. What's the plan here? What, what would be good here? Well, I can tell you this, guys. The cost curves of a lot of these small silver companies, 
they are all up here. They're in the low to mid 20s. Uh, some of them are even higher than that. And they've got a lot of capital that they're going to have to raise to build these mines. And with interest rates where they're at, oh, it's probably not a good spot where that some of these small mining companies are probably not going to be able to build the mine very easily. So if it does get down here, that is a gift. You are below the cost curves at 19 ish dollars if it gets that low, and the physical metal would be the least risk way to play it. Um, kind of know what I'm going to do if it gets down there. Uh, Platinum's another one that came on back, came on down. Uh, we're back against that support region. We'll see if support holds. If it doesn't hold, uh, we could go back down into the 800 somewhere. Guess where that is? Right at or below the cost curves. So if it gets down there, uh, yeah, I'll be looking at both of these for a little bit of uh, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, I know some people get afraid. They get worried. Oh, my gosh, we're down 4.8% in silver. I get it. I understand it, but uh, you know what? We don't play with emotions, guys. We play with logic. Uh, logic says you buy it when it's below the cost curves, and then you wait because it has to go higher above the cost curves. Uh, palladium also getting smoked to the downside. Uh, this is the out-of-cycle metal. I would not be playing with this yet. Let it get down here, guys. Let it get down there uh, where maybe we see 800 bucks an ounce or 1000 bucks an ounce or something like that. We've got XAU to gold ratio. Uh, that is breaking to the downside. Uh, but we haven't broken my last line of defense, uh, which is, let me uh, delete this out here real quick and put a, put a legit, we are, we, well, we could be breaking the last line of defense here uh, where we could see a lot further downside uh, if things were to break out. Now, also, as yields break higher, and I don't know if that's a bond crisis or what, we could see a big move lower in gold, in the gold and silver mining companies, in the overall markets, if it is, in fact, a bond crisis. We could. We could see lower prices across the board. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to react to that. They can't let the bond market go. Uh, so the pressure is building in the bond market right now, and then pressures are going to build in the currency if they try to save it. And that's where your currency is going to get hit. Because if they try to save it, that means that they're going to buy bonds. They're going to suppress yields to some degree. And then the pressure is going to build in the currency. And that's where this will reverse and move on up. Uh, so this could be a last final washout sale, perhaps, uh, to, to scare everyone into one direction. Um, and to scare the Federal Reserve into taking action, which could also be the case. CRB index down a little bit. Uh, we're back to that support level <clears throat> for the CRB index. We'll see if it holds. Um, we're still above the pattern. Everything is still bullish. We're just getting a little bit of a pullback. And that could pull back more than what we have already. It's possible. <clears throat> CRB to, uh, to the S&P 500. Uh, looks like we're getting a pullback here in this ratio. So we might get a little bit of a pullback in the short term. Uh, GDX down quite a bit. Does not look good. There's your flag pattern that I posted where we could see further downside. GDX, the same thing. G and SILJ, uh, more selling pressure. We, we're breaking out of these support levels to the downside. We could see further downside, depending on what these interest rates do. If they just continue to keep rocketing higher, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it could go lower. Uh, crude oil. Down today as well uh, with the rest of everything. The next support level, uh, if you were to look at this, this is on the dailies. I drew this on the monthlies. <clears throat> but on the dailies, you're looking at about eh, somewhere in this range there, about 82 bucks. All right, $82 is your next support level. Uh, 82 to 78 is a strong support zone. So we'll see if it pulls back. We'll see what happens. And uh, if this is something that is of a bigger crisis, we could get a pretty big size pullback here. Uh, it is possible. We've got uh, TTF net gas pulling on back. That was looking really good. But these yields and everything else, I mean, that's what they're using to, to kind of stop these moves, guys. They're, they're just yanking and cranking the yields uh, up on us. 
And it is, to some extent, working in the short term here. Nat gas down a little bit. This does look like we could go down further. It is a bearish engulfing pattern. And we could head lower here in the short term. Longer term, we still are basing out, and it still looks fine. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me. <clears throat> Again, we got the bearish engulfing on Friday. I said, look, this has got downside potential. And then we got the downward move. Um, we got to see what follow through it has. We do have a little wick at the bottom, which is good. Uh, it didn't just get completely sold off. We have a little bit of a bounce up towards the end of the end of the day. So we'll see what happens uh, over the next few trading days. Uh, but this still, it it could still head lower. Uh, but it looks that little wick at the bottom at least is a little bit. We got a little bounce. We'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, OIH also getting a little bit of a wick at the bottom, but again, we've got bearish engulfing here, a bearish engulfing here, and we got a bullish engulfing here, but again, this is starting to stack up. We're getting some selling pressure here. We could see some further downside. Uh, we want to see what the bounce is here. If it's a small little bounce, we could roll back over and head lower. So um, we do have a lot of upside potential, but we could get a pullback here before heading higher. So that's what's in the cards uh, at the moment. Uh, Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, uh, also seeing selling pressure. At least it's nice to see a little bit of a bounce towards the end of the day in, in buying pressure. Um, <clears throat> this is what it looks like here. It looks like we've got some sort of guy that kind of broke out to the downside. We'll see. Uh, but again, with the overall markets and yields doing what they're doing, I, I would be hesitant to to just jump in front of that. But uh, again, we're in a strong upward uptrend move in Sprott and URNM and all these equities. So I'm not going to sell anything. I'm not scared by any means. Uh, URA getting the, that selling pressure. There's your bearish engulfing uh, candlestick that we got last trading session. Uh, we've got this trading session that just ended. Again, we could still see downside pressure uh, across the board. <clears throat> URNM as well and URNJ. Uh, but keep in mind, the momentum on the longer term is up. <clears throat> so you have to, if you're a newer investor, you have to think of things in multiple time frames. Uh, the big, the longer term time frame of the momentum is higher. The shorter term time frame is lower. This could reverse at any time and it could be very quick. So again, I'm not going to try to trade this short term stuff, guys. Here's another bearish engulfing. You could see it went a couple of days and then rocketed higher. It could do the same thing. And we could get some sort of pattern that looks like that. That would be a, probably a, a topping pattern. I'm not saying that's going to work its way out, but um, we'll see. Uh, Tan, going back to that 48 level, looks like it's definitely going to hit it. Uh, these interest rates are going to go around and wreck everything, guys. I'm, I'm sure these guys don't make any money. Solar is not a huge money maker. Same with a lot of these other renewable companies. So uh, this could this could go down a long way with interest rates going up. These are all supposedly growth companies, and growth gets hits the it usually gets hits the worst uh, if they don't have the good good cash flow. COPX uh, down today three and a half percent. Pretty strong selling pressure day. We'll see what that looks like over the next few trading sessions, uh, but we're still within the channel. Lithium down, uh, right on support. Again, we'll see what happens in the next few trading sessions along with uh, REMX. We do have a little wick at the bottom, uh, a little bit stronger selling pressure today. And again, we're gonna we're, let's wait and see what happens. Uh, the, the pattern, the big pattern's all there, but we're getting short-term market weakness with those yields rocketing on the way up. Uh, surprisingly, the S&P 500 was sideways and surprisingly, the NASDAQ was up a little bit. Weird. <laughs> Weird. Okay, sure. Uh, so we'll again, we'll see what happens over the next few days. Um, this is the spot I, I wouldn't be in, but uh, merging markets down a little bit, stronger dollar, stronger yields. Yeah, we get it. Uh, XHB also down a little bit, stronger yield, stronger dollar. I get it. There is a lot of selling pressure in that circle there. Look at all the big red days versus the green candlesticks. That's generally um, a sign that we could see further downside. It's possible. Mu also selling off a little bit. Well, a lot of it, 1.9%. But 
That's what it looks like on the bigger picture. And it is possible to come back into the low 70s uh, if it decides to go down there and do a retest of this breakout. Uh, most likely, it's probably going to do that. Uh, H, so HG is our copper. Now, copper got sold pretty hard today. That's a bearish engulfing. And we've been trading back and forth in this circle here. Uh, kind of funky how that looks because we've got a lot of green candlesticks all through here. Look very bullish back there, but it's starting to look a little bit more bearish after today's trading action. So we'll see. Um, if copper breaks to the downside, we could be getting a pullback uh, in the overall markets here, guys. Uh, gold's already broken to the downside. Silver is extending its losses to the downside. And copper here, well, it's getting sold pretty hard today. So we could see further downside if this decides to continue in that direction. Uh, we're still right at support. So again, we'll see what happens. I'm just getting you ready. We could be getting a larger pullback here in the overall markets. Uh, iron ore, I, yeah, I still think iron ore is fine. Uh, we've broken out. Yeah, it's drifting a little bit lower. That's fine. Uh, and I do think it's going to work its way on higher. Um, and that deals with China and the manufacturing growing over there. We've got nickel that's up. It's kind of bucking the trend. But again, guys, momentum's to the downside. I'm not jumping in front of that train. Uh, aluminum's down, but this does look uh, not too bad. We've got big buying pressure through here. Small selling pressure. Uh, it's a bloody nose today, a little bit larger one, bleeding a little bit profusely, but I still think we're going higher in aluminum uh, with the overall trend. Not day to day, just overall trend. <clears throat> Baltic dry index down a little bit, but again, guys, the overall trend is higher. Uh, and that is what is weird. We're getting this selling pressure in America. I think it's being driven by yields. We've got manufacturing stabilizing over in China, and we've got these base metals breaking to the upside that are iron ore, aluminum, and the Baltic dry index. Kind of weird there. Kind of weird. Uh, we've got conflicting information is basically what I'm saying. Uh, we've got Newcastle Coal. Uh, again, I think this is this is going to base out here, much like net gas has been moving sideways. Uh, coal is going to do the same thing. It's going to go sideways for a while, and then we're going to move on up. So I think coal looks good. It's a retest of the base. Uh, but we could, we could trampoline jump for a while here uh, over the next months or maybe even six months. Uh, Bitcoin down a little bit. <clears throat> Pretty resilient given what's happening today, it still looks good to go higher uh, in the short, short term. That's a uh, bloody nose. And then Ethereum uh, down a lot today, 3.6% above that support level that I drew across here. So we're right at support. Again, we'll see what happens there. Um, if I were to kind of sum this up, if I were to guess what the market was doing, <clears throat> here's my guess. <laughs> I think that gold was thinking that the that the Federal Reserve was going to loosen, uh, you know, not be as tight as they are, uh, that they were going to reverse yields and that they were going to start printing money again. To me, it looks like the entire market, all these markets are tied together through liquidity in the system. Liquidity is drying up uh, to some extent. Quantitative tightening. <clears throat> Less money printing, no quantitative easing. Interest rates are coming on up. It is slowing lending in the system. Things are tightening. What we're seeing in the markets, gold rolled on over here. So we could be seeing uh, a pullback in the markets. Uh, from liquidity, maybe there's some car garbage in the system that needs to get cleansed out. Now, <clears throat> I don't think the Federal Reserve and states and governments, they can't crash this thing. Um, why is that? Their tax revenues are going to go. <laughs> so they're going to have to be on this, this rope and they're going to tight, basically do a tight walk, you know, like those, those guys on the ropes that are walking. Um, they can't let it, they can't let the system fall. Uh, their tax revenues go to, to crap. Their interest payments go ballistically up to the upside. And the system, they can't allow that system to crash uh, because then they lose the power of the money printing. So they're, they're walking on the tightrope. They're trying to control, quote, inflation through this increasing of interest rates. 
Uh, they're letting it go because nobody wants to buy bonds. The real estate market, so the real estate market kicked this all off. It was the homes coming into, the new homes coming into existence, the loans coming into the system. The stimulus also kicked this off. Um, the stimulus, I also think they did that because they didn't want a, def, you know, a collapse in 2020. And what I think is going to happen is markets are going to slow down just like we're seeing. And at some point, they're going to print a bunch of money. They're going to do quantitative easing and they're going to rotate because they're, they're going to have to at some point. And I don't know when that point is. I'm not stating it's going to be immediate. I'm not stating I don't. I know that, you know, with any sort of certainty yet. But um, <clears throat> that's their only defense, guys. It's their offense and their defense. It's to print money. Uh, and do quantitative easing when the market starts to puke. Um, but today, yeah, it's a it's a down day. Again, we'll see where we go from here, uh, and we'll see what oil does and and a lot of these different commodities. But um, again, it looks like we we could potentially have a pullback. Gold's pulling on back, and and that's what we've got in front of us. If you guys like the content? Give me a thumb up. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the website, guys. Uh, we do have discount is the coupon code at the moment. Uh, for a small discount on the monthly uh, and a larger discount on the yearly. Uh, and we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. We'll catch you later.